Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about some of the ableism that is present in films and shows created by Mike Flanagan. So as, as a horror fan and a disabled person, and I'm in my last semester of grad school for disability studies, it really hurts me to talk about this because I really love Mike Flanagan's work. And this is gonna have some spoilers in it, so if that bothers you, then feel free to skip around, depending on if you've seen the show or movie before. But if you don't know who Mike Flanagan is, he is an American filmmaker. He's a director and writer. He has mostly worked on Netflix films and shows. He's probably most well known for The Haunting of Hill House and, and Gerald's Game and those types of shows, those spooky shows and movies that horror fans love. He's inspired by a lot of classic literature like the works of Edgar Allan Poe and also in The Turning of the Screw, which was a novel I loved in high school. And so I think, I think the reason Mike Flanagan is so popular is because his horror is not just gruesome. It has heart to it and humanity to it. And I think that's what a lot of horror fans like about him. But in that, he also falls into a lot of ableist tropes and ableist casting, which bothers me. But if you're new to my channel somehow, ableism is the discrimination or just thinking lowly of somebody based on disability or perceived disability. I, I first want to start off with Gerald's game, which was one of Mike Flanagan's first real popular projects. So I'm not really going to go into the plot of it because you can watch other videos that will go into that or you can watch the movie on Netflix. But <clears throat> it's basically a, a woman is trapped, tied to a bed and she has, and she's all alone and she has to figure out how to escape by herself. And it deals a lot with her childhood trauma and lots of that. But in it, there's this character known as the Moonlight Man, who, who's, whose name in the film ends up being Raymond a Andrew. He is very tall and bald and his so I, I don't know if I explained this correctly originally, but my issue with the Moonlight Man from J is that it plays into the idea that people that are v visibly quote unquote deformed are somehow evil. And this trope is seen in a lot of movies. We even see this in Disney movies with a lot of the villains looking different, like Scar from The Lion King. Even in Snow White, when the evil queen turns into the old lady, she's hunched over and her nose is huge and she just looks creepy. And I think a lot of people, especially with facial differences, really struggle with this and being, and people being scared of them in public. A really good activist who fights against 
this type of facial difference. Ableism is a lady named Carly Findlay, and she has two books, and she has a blog. She writes a lot about what it's like to have a facial difference and to be treated differently, and why having a facial difference doesn't make somebody inherently evil. And I know people are gonna be like, no, she's Sherlock, but unfortunately with our society and with the media we consume, it's that's not always an obvious thing, even though it should be. You get the sense he's disabled. He either has some type of intellectual disability or a developmental disability, but he slurs his speech and he's not always coherent. And he is the monster of the film, but he's also kind of a joke. It's kind of comic relief in a way, which is obviously messed up that they would have a disabled person be used for comic relief. But then there's one scene where they're in a courthouse and the protagonist, Jesse, is testifying. And Raymond Andrew starts screaming and crying, you are not real, you are not real, in like, in like a way you could tell he's disabled by how he's slurring the words and he almost sounds childlike. This really made me cringe as somebody with a speech impairment because I get made fun of on the daily for how I talk. And I just know that some hunky teenagers are gonna watch this and they're gonna laugh about it and think it's a joke. And then if they meet somebody with a speech impairment, they may make fun of them. And it just, it wasn't necessary to the film having this character whatsoever. In fact, it made it not make sense in a way. I feel like the film would have been better if they had just cut this whole plot point out because if you watch the film, it doesn't really make the film any better. So I feel like it was used for comic relief in a way, which was unnecessary. And the next project I wanna talk about is a show called Midnight Mass. Again, I'm not really gonna go into the whole plot, but there's, they basically live on this small island where everybody knows everybody. And there's this character named Lisa who became paraplegic after an a a accident. And the whole time people are feeling sorry for Lisa saying how tragic it is that she ended up in a wheelchair and how basically her life is over. And while I understand that in a small town, a lot of times that is how disabled people are treated, especially if you're not exposed to a lot of disabled people. When one person in your town is disabled, it's seen as this tragedy when in reality, disabled people can go on to live full lives and they often do. And a lot of the barriers disabled people face are imposed by a society. But then Elisa becomes cured by this priest. And while many argue that this curing, this miraculous cure is not ableist because it's part of the plot to reveal that the whole church and the whole mindset of a miracle can go too far and people can let evil in in trying to enact miracles. And in being so 
dedicated to their brand of faith that they can forget about what's really important and that is community and that that is one way of interpreting it but lisa is treated much differently and also her whole personality changes when she's able to walk again and it is seen as like now she's finally back to her real self and that is problematic because disabled people are whole people without being cured. I don't need to be cured to be a whole person and to have a life worth living. I can have a life worth living right now as a disabled person. And the, the next movie I'm going to be talking about, I've talked about this in a previous video, but it's the movie Hush. And the thing that I have the most problem with about this film is that the main character is deaf, but she's not played by a deaf actress. She's played by actually Mike Flanagan's wife, Kate Eagle, who is in a lot of his movies and shows, which I have no problem with you casting your wife in your movies and shows. But the thing is, is she's not deaf. She doesn't communicate using sign language, but this character does. This character, Maddie, communicates using sign language. I feel like this would be a very good place to cast a deaf actress and to highlight how deaf actresses can be just as good as hearing actresses. But no, that, that route was not taken. And I wouldn't chalk this up. I would chalk this up to more like nepotism and um, casting your wife. But the thing is, is when you I add it together with all these other instances of ableism within Mike Flanagan's projects. I think it paints a broader picture that he has, he holds ableist beliefs. And now I'm not saying he's this awful bigoted person, I'm just saying he holds ableist beliefs. And these beliefs can and need to be unlearned. The, the last thing I'm going to talk about is The Midnight Club, which is a TV show that came out last year, and it was canceled for the second season, so there's only one season. Now this, now this show had Ruth Hodd in it, who is an amputee in real life, and she played an amputee named Anya and I had no problem with this show until I, I believe it was the last episode it's been a while now since I've watched it I watched it back when it first came out which was last year but Anya loses her leg for a bunch of traumatic things that go on and she was a ballerina but then when she lost her leg she stopped with the ballet but she has this figurine that she broke and now that ballet figurine only has one leg but in the end and spoiler alert this is a major spoiler but Anya passes away and then the figurine magically gets its leg back and it just left a bad taste in my mouth because it left the impression that like now Anya's whole again if the figurine has its leg back it's like it's supposed to be a lot of disabled people don't regain their function if they're an amputee they don't magically get their leg back. 
They may have a prosthetic leg, but they're still an a amputee. And I think that would have been a good place to show that, yeah, she was a ballerina. But I mean, first of all, disabled people can still do ballet. But even if you were to argue that it's not the same for her anymore and she wants to do something else because it just reminds her of that, then she could still do something else and live a full life. And granted, this character had cancer, so. So it's a bit different, but I think the symbolism with the figurine was kind of ableist and was sending the message that she's whole again. And if she had her leg back, then she's whole again, which like, no, that's not the case. Anyway, this isn't a mic. Flanagan hate video. Like I said earlier in this video, I do enjoy Mike Flanagan's work. And honestly, if he wants to hire a disabled consultant or a disabled writer, I'm always available. Mike, I doubt you'll watch this. And if you do, you might not like me, but I would be more than happy to work on a project and to help you maybe move away from some of these problematic tropes and realize that horror doesn't have to mean ableism. Anyway, I hope you learned something in this video. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you, if you see it a different way or if there's something I haven't watched and you're like, this is, this is even worse, Erica, or like just if this made you think anyway please give it a thumbs up if you learned something and if you have not already and you would like to see more of my content please consider hitting that subscribe button down below thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you again next time bye